just in case you missed it. It's the top five sports talkers of the day. Now, it's time for Dan Barrero's Top 5 at 5. Top five at five time, ladies and gentlemen. Guardsy's in the house. I'm in the house. The house, in this case, being the our target center cage location. We'll be going the distance until 6.30 this evening. Uh, will we be guest-free the rest of the way? I don't know. I do know that our appearances are brought to you by our good friends at Crazy Fresh Produce. Where would you like to begin, Guardsy? This is for Kevin Fallness. You know, he's been forgotten. <laughs> Since when did the playoffs start? April 14th, April 17th. I think it was like April 20th. That's true. But you know what? He threw me a bone the other day. Did he? I, I got to give him credit. He found a, an, a, a really compelling piece of audio and video. My security's here, by the way. This is good. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, where are you going? Uh, surrounding Bill Walton, the Bill Walton story. Oh, good. And I said, wow. That sounds a nice gesture, I thought, by Faulness. And almost some acknowledgement. That indeed, um, there you know he even he gets that even though it's the state of hockey, there's other stuff that occasionally is worth discussing. So for him, we lead with hockey, a team that he has nothing to do with. <laughs> I'm guessing he probably hasn't even gone down to the XL Energy Center to watch. Wow, that's that would just be my guess. That's an accusation right there. That would be my guess. But the NWHL Minnesota Club, which we learned last night, will officially have a name in August. And by the way, do we it, clarify or refresh my memory on why we didn't have any nicknames? They just wanted to get the league going okay, and say, we're right. starting with Minnesota, we're starting with Boston, we're starting with Toronto, mm-hmm. we're starting this way. And apparently the reporters that were there last night confirmed that they're going to announce nicknames in August. But for now, the Minnesota Club... Maybe Louie, by the way, could could grow the game, the women's game in Florida, when they have, you know, get an expansion team going down He'd there. probably general manage it. Yeah, there's no question. He probably anyway, would be. sorry. But they got the victory last night in the... What do you call it? The the final game of the season, right? I mean, yeah. it, it was game five. It was, do, was yeah. win or go home. Uh, nothing better. Championship and round. They beat Best Boston 3-0. Nicole Hensley, the goaltender, gets her second shutout of the finals. Liz Shepers, Michaela Cava, and Kendall Coyne Schofield, the legend, uh, provide the goals. And uh, Taylor Heisey had uh, her eighth point of the postseason. And our club, in year one, got it done. They will have a celebration, you I see believe. Tel- did you notice who televised the game last night? Well, it's Bally. Who else? I didn't. Who? Fox 9 Plus. Oh, that's right. It was on 29. That's right. Fox 9 Plus had it on. It's also on YouTube TV. That's true. But again, we're, I think we're seeing, you know, we work there, but in all seriousness, we're seeing, I mean, that station, the effort, the commitment to the sports bit at Fox 9, I mean, let's be honest, there's nothing else in this town touches it. I mean, everything, and I didn't even know that till I saw, I don't know if I saw a tweet, whatever, but there it is, Fox 9 Plus. 29, whatever you want to call it. I think it's, you know, officially Fox 9 Plus. Um, now, <laughs> that brings up an interesting issue that we haven't discussed on air before. What's that? My sources say that uh, on Friday nights. Oh, you heard the, about this? In the fall. Yeah, I heard about this. Uh, there's going to be national college football during our time slot on enough set. You yeah, that? from like mid-October to December. That's correct. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see what... There's a lot of uh, negotiating that's going on right now about... I don't think we're going away, but I think there's going to have to be some adjustments made. I know. So I guess I should be careful how excited I should be I know. about Fox 9's commitment to the sports bit. I know. Is 7.30 on the plus still available? That's what I want to know. I don't know. think so. Oh, man. We got to figure that out. Yeah, we're going to figure it out. Um, I may have said NWHL. It's the PWHL. Yeah. And we won. And we will celebrate tomorrow. And I, it, originally it was going to be in Rice Park, but I think because of weather, they're moving it inside to the X. Okay. Today's Thursday, right? I have no idea Today what day is it is. Today is Thursday. That's correct. So Friday, tomorrow, it's going to start about 5 o'clock. So it looked like a hell of a party. They they sent out a video of getting off the bus in, in Boston last night. Well, celebration of parties, th- th- that's... Those are that's got to be one of the great nights of your life. There's no question, yeah. and and there you know this is one of the weird things about hockey in particular. You had the odd situation in which you are. This is the second time you celebrated. Yeah, and the first time obviously was at home. The goal that ended ended you know ended up being taken away. 
That's got to be harsh, man. That's got to be very, very difficult, especially then when you lose the game in OT. But did they feel sorry for themselves? Obviously not. They went to Boston and uh, took care of business in pretty, you know, resolute fashion. Uh, winning is, well, with the I think they got an empty net goal late that I saw when I was watching it. So, but ultimately, uh, three to nothing as well. Um, Can I give a quick shout on seizing your opportunity? Yes. Because they were down, if you recall, 2-0 in the opening series against Toronto. Uh, my son Grayson and I went to game three, which was great. They it was they dominated the game. I can't remember what the final was. We had to leave early because he's seven. But they win that game. They win game four. And I think in game four, Toronto's star gets hurt. Not our problem. You win the game. Did we cheap shot her? Well, I don't know, but they hadn't won a game. Right, like they right. didn't exactly surge into the postseason, yeah, right? They right. they had a chance to clinch it. They lost on like a last second goal, um, which was unfortunate. And but they kept it in front of them. They got to game three. They got game four. They obviously got game five, and then they win the championship series. It's about seizing the opportunity in front of you, Dan. That is what's translatable tonight for your Minnesota Timberwolves. Well, that's what their, our women's teams tend to do. That's Let's true. be honest about it at the professional level. That's true. This is, the truth cannot be controversial. Uh, and, in fact, didn't we lose our last five regular season games? We barely got in. Right. Right? After dominating for much of the way. Mm-hmm. like we, we lost our way, but we obviously found it. And now they've got the first Walker Cup, and you can celebrate with that team tomorrow at 5 o'clock, should you wish. And where is that going to be, did you say? The X. At the X, okay. They were right. hoping to have it at Rice Park, but it sounds like they're moving okay. it inside because right. inclement weather is expected tomorrow. Uh, Minnesota Twins got the victory today, right? By the way, I think we wanted to put the stuff on the fan, and that was another whole bureaucratic <laughs> boondoggle that, that it, we were prevented from doing so. No. Yeah, that's what my sources say. It's unfortunate. Yeah, very. Uh, Ryan Jeffers hit a couple of dongs. The Twins trailed four rip, then led 7-4, then held on to beat the Kansas City Royals this afternoon at Target Field. It was a Carlos Correa triple Whoa. that gave the Twins the lead, and they win, if I haven't mentioned it, 7-6. to six. A bases-clearing triple in the six for Correa. Max Kepler, RBI single uh, as well. So that's... Uh, that's how we roll at Target Field today, 7-6 to six with the victory. If I pull up the standings, I believe we are still trailing the Royals by a fairly substantial number here. I pulled it up before the show. Uh, three is the number now, and we are six behind Cleveland, who um, have lost two of three, I believe. Um, so we are third place in the American League Central. Did you say earlier that we can watch Twins games on YouTube TV? No, you said... No, I said you could watch the, the women's hockey, hockey game. game. women's hockey game, yes. Yeah. And I mentioned it was on... Uh, Fox, Fox, Fox Nine. Yeah, Plus they've as well. been on Bally all year. Yeah, and then, they've, but they've also been. They have right. their own YouTube channel because you know what they're about at the PWHL accessibility, making letting their people watch it available. Yeah, something the Twins still haven't figured out. That's what I mean. Abbott mentioned that's what because I was asking him about it. I said I'd forgotten about the YouTube angle. I said, how are you watching? He said, YouTube TV. I've been watching it on YouTube funny. with the whole family. It's been great. Who knew? Uh, tonight's game you can listen to right here on The Fan. Your Minnesota Timberwolves 100.3. 100.3 FM. You can also listen wherever you are on the free and very easy to use iHeartRadio app. Anything you want to say about the Twins? Uh, twins, no, because I, I didn't see any of it. Or, uh, uh, so I'd, I'd just be making it up as I go along other than we won another series, right? We, uh, we lost yesterday. Won the getaway day. I don't even know. Do we stay home or we go to any place now? The Minnesota Twins go to Houston. Houston gun, gun belt, belt tight. tight for sure. Uh, by the way, the um, so the spread tonight four and a half wolves by four and a half. That's what you told me. You want me to pull up the double check the moving it, line? It, you mentioned you thought yesterday was five and a half, which did seem ridiculous. And obviously, some money came in the other uh, other direction. I have. I'm done. Uh, I'm out of the guaranteeing business. That didn't work out very well. The other that was was that game two. I guaranteed game two. Yes, when we were here on Friday, and they could have and should have. There's no question, but they didn't. You didn't know they were gonna switch out Rudy Gobert and just make him try to lock up Luca down no, two still, down when they're down two and only a three can beat you. I'm still annoyed about that. You should be I'm still annoyed. It's just bizarre. I anyway, still am too. I'm but trying to move on. I know you we got to turn the page. Got to turn the page. You got a chance now to. Uh, send it back. To, so game, we're on it every other day the rest of the way, right? Yeah, game we have five been the is whole tonight. Series. Yep. Game six would be Saturday night in Dallas. A game seven back here would be Monday night. It correct? would be, yeah. Monday night basketball to um, decide who plays the, I think the NBA Finals start then the following Thursday. June 6th. So a week from today, I think, right? Yes. Which might impede my progress in the program password invitational Ooh. semifinals because Brandon wants to set it up for a week from today and I told him 
I'm going to be in Boston for game one of the NBA finals. Until further notice, I'm going to be in Boston. So I, Nordo and I will be ready to take on Swedberg and Charch, who beat uh, Carly Zucker and Marnie Gellner today. We'll be ready whenever you say to be ready, but I'm going to have to be in Boston for game one of the NBA finals next what, Thursday. By hook or by crook? Yeah. You're saying you'll be there. I'm expecting whether, the Wolves to be there. Whether you're re- representing, so you, oh yeah, but the Wolves have to get there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going not to, watch, go to the Mavs. watch Dallas. No, I'm not going to go hang with Mark Cuban. Knock off the Celtics. No, that's, well, you you if Mark Cuban would invite you, you'd go. I'd go. Yeah, yeah I mean, you gave me a ride. He wanted to use, use his jet, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't cost you anything. Wolves are four and a half point favorites tonight, according to the DraftKings Sportsbook. I, yeah, I don't care about now. Look, um, does <laughs> what Johnny mentioned is what I'm sure Wolves the, the Wolves fans' fantasy is that tonight's the game five in this series will match the game six against Denver, right? Previous I'm not, series. I'm not which was, on that. These are both home games, okay? Yeah, I think that's getting greedy because we were up 50 in that game and we ended up <laughs> winning by 45. But is it possible this could be the game? Because I said they were going to win game two comfortably. I think I said eight to ten. Yeah. And obviously there's been no comfortable game in this series. You can make the argument that that still that that can happen if you hit enough shots, that still might happen. But I'm not getting in the business of how many points they win by at this point. You know, you just have to win the damn thing, even if it's another close game. And the best way to do that is not flirt with the basketball, tempt the basketball guys to punish you for being in stupid foul trouble. Yep. You survived it, but would you survive it two straight games? We didn't talk and about that three minute stretch before the half enough. That's true. Right? You're right. I'm like, completely that could be a debacle. Debacle. I mean, that could have been down ten. And clean it up. You know, yes. again, Stop take away it a few over. of the turnovers. Although again, I'm so adamant about not settling and driving if it, even if it's into traffic, I might accept a little more of that if the alternative is Side to side basketball, right. where by the end of it, it's Jaden McDaniels trying to figure out what the hell to do with it, and 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 ends up a, ends up a turnover. You know, Jaden's played well this he series. He has. That's yeah. that's really he, well, very very well. They could use another good game from him. Wolves have lost four of the last five at home. I've been I've been there, which does not bode well. Uh, that's another because we keep saying, well, you get back home here, you got two of the next three at home. That's right. Well, you got to make it feel like the home court matters because lately we have not played particularly well at home. There you go. There's your top five. All right, let's do this. Let's pause here. And uh, as I said, we'll go till 6.30 tonight. And pregame to the pregame, I'm assuming Howl, uh, Howlin' with the homies. Howlin' with the homies, 6.30. 6.30 to 7. And then uh, the regular pregame show will begin at 7 o'clock right here in the fan. All right, so um, there's a couple key, key questions tonight. One, will the Wolves win game five? Or can they win? Well, they can win Game 5. Will they win Game 5, I guess, is the better uh, way to put it. And then the other part of the suspense is whether KG is going to be here. And a lot of it was fueled this time by what Kendrick Perkins said publicly. Was it yesterday or the day before? I think yep. it was yesterday yep. on ESPN. My sources say he ain't coming today. Johnny's sources are saying he's not coming today. Uh, you had a source indicating that, well, they're doing a lot of rehearsing with new a new KG video. Yep, that someone I think has tweeted out here recently. That might indicate that something's up tonight, although that could be used at any point. So we'll see. My my guess is he's not going to be here. We, don't, we would know it by now for sure. But um, my other uh, question is whether Tim Connolly is going to stop by our booth before we're done at 630. I don't know. Uh, I'll just say it's available to him. If we could get five minutes with him, would it be great? If we get, you know, if he wants to come in now and and spend the rest of the show with us, that will be uh, fine as well. All those things are good. I can confirm that another extremely loyal, long-standing Minnesota Timberwolves fan, a and he's one of us, big time, authentic one of us, Jimmy Jam. There we go. Has uh, flown back from his home base, which is these days, of course, and been for a while, Los Angeles, California. He will be here in the building. He was in, um, we talked to him on the air. Was that the Phoenix series or no, no Denver series? It was Denver. Yeah. I can't remember when we talked to him. And I think he's, he may have even been on the road for another game or two. But in any case, he is here tonight. He was at game two of Denver, I think. That's and what that, it, I was it. told he was, that's when we talked to him. And then game, I was told he was at game seven, too. Okay. Yeah, that would make some sense. So, um, Maybe we'll try to get him tomorrow if because I, uh, I I do know that he has uh, landed. He even sent me a, a nice video uh, approaching baggage claim, 
at uh, his second favorite airport, Twin Cities International. You wonder if he'll stick around for Game Seven, well, that's, yeah. and then we should have him. He's at too the busy. Cage. He's too busy. Well, you never. He know. Might, well, no, knowing him, he'd come. I mean, he might go back and forth. That's true. He could do that. But that the question with him, in all honesty, is he's doing so. He he and Terry are doing so many you know projects still right, right. that literally that stuff all gets scheduled, and some of it is movable, and I'm guessing some of it it's true is not all that movable at all. Right? It's true. Yeah. Um, so basically, he was center court. Um, opposite the benches, just to if you're facing, if you're on the bench side, scores table side, he'd be slightly to the right, right? He and Terry. That's what I remember. But he, was Terry there all the time too? I don't know. I can't remember. And then occasionally Prince would show up. Yep. And occasionally Prince would actually deign to follow the action because sometimes he wouldn't. Really, like if the ball would go. You know, like in tennis. Your head goes back and forth wherever the you know the ball mm-hmm. is being hit from one side to the other. Sometimes Prince would turn towards the action on his left uh, or his right, and sometimes he would just stay on one side of the court. Would he really? Yeah, he's, he's, I don't, I don't know that he was trip. He certainly wasn't as into it, yeah, as Jimmy was for the, sure. The only guy I never really noticed who was courtside for two reasons. Number one, Coach Bill Bizey. That's the the guy that you would always check. Who still comes from time to time. Right. He always gets he always gets recognized. And sec- Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mark Rosen. Mark Rosen, ladies I, I and gentlemen. I was just going to let him walk by. No, I want to get him. No, get no applause, going. man. Yeah, wow. I don't know. They're like, what is, yeah. who is that? <laughs> Aren't you on the power trip? <laughs> um, but also, I was so locked in. I was such a rube. I didn't care who was at the game because I was at the game. Yeah, like when I was like 14, well, 15, 16, be, really. 17, yeah. 18, I was always so locked in on the, the actual people. action. I didn't. Yeah, it was, he didn't need that nonsense. I was there it to didn't see mean anything to you. No, I wanted so, to see Garnett. What about the guy? I can't remember his name. The guy who, um, there's the famous viral video where he takes his shirt off. Oh, Jiggly Boy. Jiggly Boy. Is yeah. Jiggly Boy still around? He's still around. Yeah. Is, have they brought him back for t- tonight? Would be a great night for the return of Jiggly tonight Boy. Tonight would be Wouldn't a good it? Jiggly Come on, Boy. Man. We we had Jeff Munich. He walked by earlier. He would be the guy that would know. Well, he would know all. He will. He'll. He, he knows whether KG's coming tonight. That's for sure. I bet he does. Yeah, he's got him. I bet he There's does. Nothing he doesn't know. Jiggly Boy. Speaking of KG, came back that night, right? The night that exactly. Garnett came back from and KG with almost Flip. lost. It on the court, if you were calling, how could you not saluting him, looking at him, big grin on his face? I mean, how can you not? Jiggly Boy made everybody smile. Yes, he did. But I'm worried. Do you think Kessler would ever considered playing the Jiggly Boy role? He's got the time. We know that he's got the time. Well, now he's such a big Wolf super fan. Yeah, <laughs> it'd get him free tickets in here. Is he, so in, we, is he here? Is he here tonight? I don't tonight? think he's coming tonight. Really? He, didn't, he didn't mention it, but that I, we didn't really. We kind of lost control well, of Kessler yesterday, so we didn't talk about much. None of these decisions are his, right? To go on these yeah, trips. Yeah, I mean it's it's Mim. Mim runs the the whole deal. I mean she's the superstar at this point. He's the he's the add on. He's, he's the, the accessory. An, he's the and one, right? He is the plus one. Or yeah, plus one. He's yeah. the accessory to all of this. And one is what Ant calls for every time he goes to the basket. Well, it'd be scores. nice if he got one. Well, I will tell you, I we didn't talk about this with Johnny. I do think, as much as I hate going down the officiating row, as you know. <laughs> yep. Um, I think. I think we've uh, we're getting a bad whistle. A couple more calls. I do think, and I do think this gets back to reputation. Luca has the rep. Well, he call, he draws fouls. Some of it is he's good at it. Yeah, but some of it is I do think then it becomes well. Yeah, it, chances are Luca got fouled there, and there have been some drives to the basket that have not gone well. Where I go, oh, that that looks like a foul to me. Now his finishing. You know, Isaiah Thomas made this point, and I think it's a fair one. This was when it was all about doing the compare the Jordan Ant comparison. We're hearing less of that now, but we yeah. were, okay? And somebody asked Isaiah, and I thought Isaiah gave a pretty good answer. He said trying to compare the two at the age, same age, 22. He said Anthony Edwards is a better shooter than Michael Jordan was at 22. Michael Jordan was a better finisher at the basket that makes than Anthony sense. is. And I think that's a, a really astute yeah. set of observations. I think that's very, very true. I think that's a good way to look at it. Because I think, and I don't know how you, you know, if is it, is it experience? I think some of his finishing, despite how athletic he is, isn't great at the basket. We've seen it this series. We have. A yeah. couple of times where you're watching, and I mentioned to you, I've, I've watched two of the games on airplanes, and so it's kind of hard to see sometimes what actually happens. And you watch, you go, he actually missed that. He got to the rim, he was right there, and for whatever the reason, he couldn't finish it. And it's interesting how he chooses, every time he drives, 
he can dunk at any moment, it yeah. seems like. We saw that in Game 3. There's times where I'm surprised that he hasn't loaded up and tried to just hammer on a guy. Right. And he when he goes and he I just like to tries see it a little bit more. Well, I think, but but some of it I think is what Johnny said. I think he gets rushed. I think yes. to their credit, defensively, they're rushing him. And when you get rushed, then you're not going to have quite the same balance to put the bank the ball off the rim the, the, right. the same way that you would. Although I did love, I know it drives Finchie crazy. He likes to bank from the sides. I know. And he made a, uh, was it last game? He yes. made a good one. Yes. That I, uh, His I, second I to last it. basket. I don't know what the analytics say, whether you're, it's a harder shot to make or not, than just, just take the bleeping jumper. Yep. But he, he, he's obsessed with that. He does yep. like uh, side bank shots. And that one wasn't as clean as some of his other banks. No. Like, it wasn't a perfect right. bank. That's it was true. good enough, and it went in, but yeah. it wasn't as clean as some of the ones we've seen in the regular season. All right, let's pause here. Got a, a full hour yet to go. Plenty of uh, pregame speculation and conversation. We'll revisit a couple of topics regarding this series we got to earlier, and we will uh, hit the A section once again. It's a rather historic day when a former President of the United States is convicted on how many felony counts? 34? 34. Or are they all felonies? I don't know that. Well, 34 counts, that's yep. for sure. Uh, we'll get to some details on that as well. Don't go away. <laughs> Howling with the Homies will start at 6.30 tonight. The regular pregame show will follow at uh, 7 as well. As an homage to the old days, um, Guardsy has placed on display at our Target Center cage location a, a vintage... KFAN, back in the AM 1130 days, <laughs> sign that reflects upon a time, well, how long ago would this have been, when, on a regular basis, the post game to the post game, you would call it to a certain extent, involved David Sinekin and Double T, uh, Trent Tucker, and the program was called Wolves After Dark. And that sign, you can now, if you stop by our location, you can see that sign. It's a relic. Uh, it is a relic. It's a... Um, Brett can fire up the music that he found, too, to have in the did background. You find, did you find yeah. some music? The old Brett Wolves Blake After Mom? Dark open. open. Yeah, let's play it. Let's play it. Have some fun with it. Yeah. Oh, this is the music. God, this was good. This brings me back. And Davey and Double T would be at GameWorks across the street a lot of times. That's true. Block E was a thing. Did they ever do it from, because we had a version of the cage on the other side of yeah. the Skyway. Did they ever do it from there? I'm sure they did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Because I went to, the memories I have of it were 2004, where I went to a lot of games. Mm-hmm. That was my first year working here, my first full year working here. And yeah, I think Davey did, I think they did most of them from here. And I remember having to bring the final stats up, that was part of my job, was to bring the final stats up. Or It wasn't part of my job. Syndicate would ask me, because he would come here or to, to the other cage, get ready, or go across the street to GameWorks, and you'd bring the final stat sheet once you got it in the press conference room and, and bring it over. So, yeah, they must have done it on site a lot, because I sat next to Syndicate a lot that year, 2003-2004. Hey, uh, Brett Blakemore, can you hit the breaking news sounder? Yes. Hang on. I'll wait. I'll hang up and, and listen. <laughs> Just got this text from uh, Wolves President of Basketball Operations, Tim Conley. I can tell by your face. Well, there's a good... Better chance we have Garnett. There's a good and a bad. Sorry, man. Game seven, I'm there. Is that the President that of Basketball call? Operations making a call? It is. That's his Mike Conley. Interesting. Very interesting. Why don't we lock down a time right now? <laughs> Just to be sure. It won't matter. Yeah. It doesn't uh, make any difference. I love it. He's got a big family, apparently. Yeah. So there's always a family He's got responsibility that uh, is involved. So it doesn't look like we're going to get Conley. Okay. But we'll make it work the uh, the rest of the way. I, I have no, uh, no problem about that. So, um, yeah, no, I don't have any breaking uh, definitive KG news. But I am uh, of the belief that we would know for sure. We would know for sure if um, if KG is going to be here tonight by now. It would have leaked, don't you think, in a more Probably. I feel like he way. would... I haven't checked his Instagram lately, but I feel like he would have put some type of Instagram out. Or maybe he just wants not the focus to be on him. There's some of that, too. Maybe he doesn't want to be the distraction before the game. And he um, just wants to come in. Here's what's interesting. So uh, I mentioned, if you want to reach us, go go hit the Twitter machine. Dan Barrero, KFAN, and um, 
Oh, I was reading a tweet that said Johnny is slightly pessimistic as a few minutes ago, but never say never. I thought he meant that Johnny, he was conveying Johnny being uh, pessimistic about the Wolves. No, that's true. Johnny was pessimistic about uh, KG coming to uh, this ball game. So maybe he, too, is waiting for a game seven. Man, that'd be maybe nice. he's never going to show. Maybe he's going to wait for the NBA Finals. But then you're back to it's Boston. Right. So then he's got... Um, he might go to both. Might go to the well, whole series. Well, he's definitely going to go to Boston, don't you think? His number's in the rafters there. He's got to. Yep. Yeah. His number's in the rafters. A very, very true Davey. Um, all right. Let's, let's, we've spent a lot of time early kind of breaking down some aspects of what we're looking for in, in game number five. And one of the things we explored with Johnny was the shooting numbers from this last game. Uh, Dallas shot worse than normal. Wolves shot better. I think Wolves were, I want to say, overall 52%. Uh, definitely over 50%. And I asked Johnny, okay, well, is that... There's some people who are picking the Mavericks tonight because they're going, I can't believe... I, you know, as it is, the Wolves had to shoot 52%, and it was still a really close game, right? It, it, it kind of went down to the semi-wire. Uh, and Johnny's belief that, is that there's no reason they can't shoot that well again. Um, I don't think it's, you know... So what we saw earlier in the in the in the playoff runs is they did have a couple of games where they shot almost unconscious. It seems. Yep. I, that's what's so silly to me about trying to predict this stuff. Yep. Just on the random numbers, they could have a night like that tonight where they shoot sixty percent or fifty seven percent or because I do think that they are largely getting. I'm talking about not necessarily Edwards. And cat so much. I know exactly what you're talking the about. The supplementary players yep. are getting a lot of open shots. No doubt. No and doubt. And it's a matter of, so could I see two guys? I could, could I see Naw and McDaniels and perish the thought, Nazareed, that they all are above 50% shooting? No, I don't think that's impossible at all. And to a certain extent, it's kind of still what has to happen, right? Is that you're yep. going to have to hit some shots uh, uh, because I, I just don't think it's realistic that you're going to stop. Uh, Dallas's big two to the same degree that you did in the last game. And to be honest, in this series, we mentioned it earlier, Jaden, I think, has been very consistent this series. He he did not have a good regular season. We know that he didn't. Um, I think he had an you uneven... him cut. Well, he was unplayable at times because he couldn't score. And then in the Phoenix series, he got going a little bit. And as Ant always says, when he plays like that, they're essentially unbeatable. The guy that would be really helpful to really get going would be Nikhil because Nas has had some moments. Jaden has obviously played consistent. The reason why they were blowing out Phoenix and they yeah. were, and then they eventually when they blew out Denver in game two was that Nikhil was hitting almost every open look that he got. And he is not, he hit a couple of threes the other night, but he also had a couple more. Like when they extended the leads, like when they took nine and made it 15, it was because those guys were hitting almost everything. That's correct. It felt like. And in this series, Dallas's bench players, at least just for me, I'm, I'm guessing the numbers would back this up. It seems like Dallas's role players, the guys that are going to get the open corner threes, you know, the guys like PJ Washington and Jones Jr. Like they've been the ones I think that have also hurt us because Kyrie and Luca have obviously been great, but those guys have been pretty damn good too. And that's what the Wolves were doing earlier in the playoffs. That's why they were running Phoenix out of the gym. That's why they were pretty productive against Denver. And in this series, they have not at the same time all produced consistently. I used to, I said it early in the playoffs. It didn't feel like the Wolves had to hide anybody. Feel, felt like they were just rolling guys in and they were all playing to the best yeah. versions of themselves. Obviously, it's going to be tougher as you go along in the playoffs. You can't expect everybody to be at that high level the whole time. But we haven't had a game like that in a while where all the role players and bench guys have been clicking. There have been different people at different times. All right, I want uh, we'll get, let's get an early break in because I need a natural break to get back to the A-section stuff. And then we'll get to a couple other, I think, hidden sneaky stats that are worth paying attention to in this series to see how they're play, they play out. Uh, tonight as well. Target Center, Cage Location. We'll be here until 6.30 right here on the fan. A section intruding in a very historic way uh, today. Donald J. Trump convicted on all 34 felony counts of, uh, accounts, I should say, of falsifying business records indicted in connection with a hush money uh, payment made to an adult film actress ahead of the 2016 presidential election. This is the first time 
the former president is convicted of a crime. Uh, what I'm reading here right now, Garzi, is that he the sentencing is set for the 11th of July. Yeah. Faces a maximum sentence of one and one-third to four years in prison. Um, Washington Post, Post notes, given his age and his lack of a prior criminal record, he could serve a shorter sentence or no term of incarceration at all. Um, neither the conviction nor any sentence prevents Trump from serving as president of the United States as well. There was a what I think there was one of those moments was it yesterday when the jury was asking for certain details and there were people it's that game that's played that the experts come on and go oh, some of those questions to me indicate that uh there's there might be a big split yep on this jury um if there was it got fixed whatever the case may be or maybe there maybe that is an example of you never can know for sure why uh juries are asking for specific Um, information as well but obviously a very consequential day for all the uh, obvious reasons and um i I, you know as i talked about earlier i'm sure we'll get to some uh, legal analysis on the show from people we trust as uh as soon as uh tomorrow um if not sooner but I, there's there's the legal side of it, and then there is the you know what I guess you'd call the political ramifications of this case, and you can't really separate the two because I mean there is a we're in a presidential election here a year the fan has learned correct yep. if I if I got that right you do I think it's it yep, November fifth so you can't really get rid of the the uh, the politics of it as well, um, and I am in the group that firmly believes I felt this from the beginning that. A conviction would do very little to dissuade, I don't think, hardly any Trump voters from still voting for him. In fact, I think there's a chance that it actually might bolster his chances to to win. Now, ultimately, maybe that all evens out on both sides, but I don't think there's anything about this like, well, no, no, this is different. This is These are felony charges. This is the former president of the United States. We're so far past that. I know. Politically speaking, that I, 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 I honestly think, you know, part of what the Trump game is, I'm going to milk the martyr role more effectively than anybody has ever done it at any level, in real life or in the movies. And that's what he's already doing. That's what he's going to continue to do. And the people who are supporting him are going to go, yeah, yeah, they are. They're doing, they're doing stuff to him that they've never done to anybody else. No one else would be treated this way. And if you think this is going to, you know, convince me to to not vote for him, well, I'll I'll show you. I'll vote twice. I'll vote five times if I get the chance to do it. I I honestly think that's the way this thing's going to play out. I think, and he already he already said in his one of his statements. I think he talked for three minutes that the real verdict will be November fifth, and that's what he's inspiring. That's what he's trying to play. That's the card he's putting down, and that's probably how it's going to go. The question is, is it? Is it more people that are going to want to vote for right. him? Is it the research that you say people have said, well, if there is a conviction, we're going to back off and maybe we'll take a look around at some of our other As options. some polling numbers had indicated previously. Some would, and but we'll see. I mean, it's easy to say when it's all the hypothetical. Yeah. Who knows? And we've learned, I think, specifically in the Donald Trump era that all polls are not to be trusted. We always kind of wondered that and thought that, but I think we've seen that a couple of different times that polling is very inexact. So... It's going to be wild, and there's three trials left scheduled before November 5th still, right? That's the thing that's that's crazy, is there are three more that are scheduled before uh, people even have to go to the ballot box. Whereas a convicted felon, he can't vote for himself because he can't vote, correct? We still have that rule. I think, I don't even, well, in a lot of places, they're uh, They're trying to move. They're trying to move, change those rules, Minnesota included, I think. So, but he can run. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm now looking at uh, the sort of overall Wall Street Journal story that um, attempts to lay it out. The New York offenses, uh, by the way, we should mention that the sentencing is July 11th. I think I said that. That's just days before the start of the Republican National Convention, interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. The New York offenses were low-level felonies that carry no mandatory punishment 
And Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg charged the case in a manner for which there's little precedent. That's why some people have felt it shouldn't have been charged. In fact, some that, that federally folks uh, weren't interested in going down this particular road. That's part of what I talked about earlier, that of the four cases against him, I thought this was the um, least serious and the weakest of the four. It's always serious to be, as a former president, convicted of felonies, obviously. But I think if, if I'm doing this, if, 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 if you want to have him held accountable, you'd been better off moving faster, more quickly on several of the other cases. There's a million, there's myriad reasons why it did not go that way. And I think that's just sort of adding to the polarization regarding uh, this case. Trump, a first-time offender with no uh, criminal record. They write, such circumstances could make a prison sentence unlikely. Other penalties for the judge to choose from, ranging from a fine to probation, he's certain to appeal. That, of course, would take could take years or months to resolve. The process could be further complicated if Trump, the presumptive uh, Republican nominee, wins a second presidential term. Um, Trump faces three other prosecutions, two over his alleged efforts to overturn President Biden's 2020 election victory. I think either of those is easily more important than this one. And one ale- uh, alleging he illegally retained classified documents after leaving the White House, though none may go to trial before Election Day. I think it's unlikely that they do. Uh, Even in this story, Wall Street Journal news story, the hush money case was considered by many observers to be the least serious of the four as well. So a lot to think about. And ultimately, regarding how this moves the needle, if at all, politically, we're we're never really going to know until we know. But I I thought, I'm not sure I ever trusted the polls previously on well no there's a bridge too far even for me i'm a trump guy but if he is convicted of any of this stuff then i got to look at it a different way i just don't think most people are going to when when push comes to shove uh they're going to say well no i'm no i don't like it but i don't like this thing i don't like this case from the beginning anyway and i don't like the alternative and so yeah i'm going to actually now even be more fervent than i was before in saying this is the guy or even if i'm not fervent um, I still would take him over the other alternatives yeah. that are available to me. And right. I, I think that's ultimately we're going to find out that a lot of people who poll in the polls said, this is going to stop me. In the end, it's not going to stop them. Because they're going to hear a lot of this analysis from people saying, well, this is the weakest of the four. Um, maybe the case was proven, but what is this case really about? And therefore, I think... There's a better chance on the Jan 6 stuff, especially that you could have, that there might have been movement from even Trump people saying, "Man, the stuff, the evidence they came up here about what he chose to involve himself with. This is this is yeah. well over the line, unprecedented stuff." And no, I I can't in good conscience vote for an individual who basically has been about overturning an election. The uh, talking points have already made it to the uh, operatives, including Marco Rubio and Ron DeSantis and Ted Cruz and Doug Bergen, North Dakota uh, governor guy, I believe. Um, the, the social media stuff is already out. The fundraising links have already been sent out. Um, never surrender. Russian support now. Uh, President Trump is fighting for you, and he will never surrender. Let's send a message to the world, the American people. Who's this from? This is Doug Bergham, okay. North Dakota. Uh, yeah, Never and, surrender. No, but And Trump has tweeted out on his true social, and then it's being picked up that he is a political prisoner, and then links to the various fundraising campaigns. Which is ironic, given that this trial was about ready, using Just campaign begun. funds That's it. to pay yeah. for cover-up money, which is interesting. It's so, only yeah, it's only begun. Beginning. These were all, they this were loaded. This is like right off the top. Yep. Oh man, it's going to be honestly it's gonna be a long summer. Even, it's it's going to be a long hot summer. It's there's already no, June. There's no question about that. All right, let's go back toy department. See Finchy? No. They asked in his pregame press conference about the move to Anthony Edwards guarding Luca. Uh-huh. And among the things that Finchy said he liked about the matchup was Ant is very adept at navigating around the illegal screens <laughs> that are set for Luka Doncic. He's speaking of guns blazing. He has started, yeah. yeah. He, he he got the tee. He talked about it. You could tell after the game 
he went kind of passive aggressive on the frustration regarding the fouls that we had to put up with that would indicate a belief that uh, he didn't find the calls equitable yep. between the two sides. And now you say he's taken the next step in his uh, pregame conversation. Yes, and I heard him on the way home last night. Uh, we did Fan on Demand on the air. They replayed his conversation with PA yesterday yes. morning that I heard parts of, but I didn't hear the first part where PA asked him about it, and he was that was pretty frontal for Finchie, really pretty frontal for anybody to go, I just don't think we're getting a good whistle. I think we're not getting the respect that we deserve, and it's starting to, it's starting to annoy me. We watched him you know, limp by again here a couple of hours ago. I'm sure he's cranky because he's still got to do the crutches. Nobody's helping him either. And he's think, just, of course, he's probably an independent guy. So I don't Finchie. need any help. I'm Finchie. Yeah. I don't need somebody to hold my hand. I'm thinking they could get a golf cart from Mail Clinic Square. Yeah. I, mean, I have to walk to Cardigan Donuts to get the coffee. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's, it's not it's, a short walk. Well, but maybe he's been told that's part of the therapy. He needs to you know, use his body. Probably a bit. right. That could get be the part blood of the flowing deal. a little yeah, bit. That could be it. So, but well, he's he's back, he's setting the tone. I mean, he's got speaking of manuals, he's got the playoff manual to try to set the tone. But the lack of physicality or letting stuff go benefits the wolves typically. Historic. Yeah, so you're right. How that's tight the, that's the sticky wicket here. Like, what are you asking for? Right. He'll tell you consistency. That's what he'll tell you. He said, I don't mind it being uh, a loose whistle if it's both ways, but it wasn't a loose whistle as far as we're concerned with the foul trouble we got into. My answer to that would be, but at least two, perhaps three of the cat fouls were inexcusable. Yes. Uh, and, and, and so it's hard to have much sympathy for him. I said, I do think around the basket, I don't think Edwards is getting some calls that likely Luca, as a guy who's established himself as a big-time you know, foul inspirer right. or attractor I want to talk about is that is likely to get. Uh, but that and that actually dovetails nicely with where I wanted to go on some other other numbers. We the Wolves can't have another game in which they miss nine free throws. Yep. You're not gonna make them all, but they were si- they survived. If you look back if you you could look at this as a positive, the Wolves on the road survived two their two best players being in significant Foul trouble, significant. Yeah, right? one fouled out, the other Ant finished with five, didn't he? He did. Um, Rudy had to sit correct. at times. Jaden had four or five. They also survived missing nine of twenty-five free throws. Wow, as well. And I'd say don't try to repeat that again. Now look, what was Rudy? Rudy at the line is always going to be a a crapshoot. Yep, five for nine. You know, and so some of that you say, well, that what do, you, what do you expect? That's Rudy. But I'd like to see seven and nine. Edwards was five for eight. Uh, uh, Conley only missed one, three for four. But they made the point on the broadcast: Conley never misses Reed free throws. Missed one. That's true. And he's shooting like sixty-four percent in this series. It's surprising. Yeah. yeah, it's very surprising because you all you remember he hit the three free throws with like two yes. tenths of a second left in the playing game against the Lakers that sent that game into overtime two years ago. Like the guy's money from the line. It's very surprising to see him miss this many. I don't. Like I said, I, I, you, you got to make a better percentage, even though a lot of that is, is, is represented by, uh, by Rudy. Because I like, I got Edwards going to the line eight times. Yep. I got, uh, I like to see Cat go more than three. But I want Edwards, if this is working right, it's Edwards at the line. There it goes. Yeah. That. Uh, is this the one? Well, I thought it was the middle one. Man. Yeah, the microphone just almost, almost, it almost uh, impaled me. Impaled the guardsy because and I lost the screw. The screws <laughs> loose. Where'd the screw go? I don't know. It does happen though. You almost have to like every segment tighten it. Is what I learned the hard way. Cal told me that too. I'm gonna have to move mics. Uh, you might have to change mics. Exactly right. Um, point is, I-, I want Edwards going to the line eight to ten times. That's what you got to have happen. And by the way, we probably didn't talk about it enough. Edwards' overall numbers outstanding. Uh, ba- basically, what um, close to a triple double. One assist from a triple double. He had twenty nine points. He had ten rebounds. He's rebounded really well in this series, and he had uh, nine assists. Now he also had six turnovers. Yeah, and you know that's again he's Two got the, the ball quarter. in his hands a lot, but that's he's got it. Okay, I'd say four might be acceptable, but between. I mean, the the Wolves had 14 turnovers, 10 of them by Towns and Edwards. Wow, that's too many. Yeah, that's too many. That yep. you you can't turn the ball over that often if you're the guys who have the ball in their hands to the degree that they do. I'd mentioned uh, via Twitter after the game, Conley. I thought he was a lot better first half than second half, but his oh, and, and and his plus minus was minus three. For whatever that's work worth, I don't think it's worth a lot here. But the numbers that stood out for me with him: 14 points. 
Uh, five for nine from the field. Seven assists, four steals, and most importantly, zero turnovers. Yeah, that's huge in thirty-four minutes. That's a an important number. But I, I don't. I think ten's too many. Don't you agree? Yes. On turnovers and the timing our main of two it. guys. Yeah. You know, he had another. Was it another turnover at the end of the quarter? It that's, was. That's it was he did. another that's right. turnover at the end of the first quarter where the Wolves come out great. And I think you even tweeted out they should be up 12. Yeah, that was a worry. But we, we, how many times, I'd, I'd love to see the analytic for, or the, the number of times the Wolves have had the ball with the shot clock off, intending to wind it all the way down and take a final shot. And not only you don't get it, you turn it over and the other team scores. Because I think they got two free throws. I think Dallas yeah. ended up getting two free throws in this particular game. And, you know, he had the back-to-back turnovers in the fourth quarter. It that is extremely. That's what you worry about because there's Dallas your guy on TV right now. Who's that? Cuban, Cuban with Shams right next to him. I saw Shams walk by yeah, earlier. They're 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 courtside right now. This is of course we got to feed into our Target Center cage location of uh, just you know what's going on at the court right now, which yep. is a few players shooting there's and Nasri. a few of the hot uh, the uh, the heavy hitters you know chatting with the big shots like Mark Cuban in the crowd you mentioned Luca and his penchant for drawing fouls yeah what obviously Luca's annoying right that's not breaking any news he 10 for 12 from the line for Luca there's a great including the miss on the yeah, four that, point yeah, play which true. ended up being I think pretty critical true what's funny about him there was a funny video of Luca even on the bench waiting specifically for a timeout, moving himself towards the official so that the second yes. that the timeout yes. was called, He's gonna do his lobbying. he could complain to yeah, the officiating, which is just too good. Yeah. But what really bothers me is I understand that stars get calls, and I understand the, you know they're going to get better whistles. Right. But what really bothers me, and this happened in the Phoenix series too, what frustrates me more than anything is when players go out of their way to try to fool the ref, and it works. Yeah. I get that that's all part of it. Tom Crean admitted to coaching Anthony Edwards to yelling like you got hit. Uh, that was a sneaky little complaint that uh, our guy Langdon Perry had uh, in yesterday's interview. He goes, so you're responsible for Anthony Edwards yelling every time he goes to the uh, to the basket, which he hasn't done much in the postseason. He started to a little bit more lately, but it just bothers me when it's obvious that the player is trying to draw the foul and these officials go for it and fall for it. And that's what bothers me. Yeah, that's I get that. What, and that's what I think Luca does better than anybody. I mean, even acting like you know Kyle Anderson accosted him um, when he went back to mean mug him, and then the ball hit him on the, in the back of the head, which I thought was great. That was serendipitous. But that's what frustrates me. Is I get it. You're going to get you know bad calls one way or the other. But when it's obvious the the, the player is just trying to fool the ref, mm-hmm. and then they do. God, that bothers me. It really bothers me. Kyrie, I'm just looking at the box score again. Kyrie was pretty bad. Uh, uh, he, had, yeah. he was 6 for 18 from the floor, including 1 for 6 from 3. Um, he had 4 turnovers. Yep. And uh, he had finished up with 16 points. He had 4 assists. He only had uh, 2 rebounds. I, I, I thought, here's the thing on Irving. You know, um, he hasn't... As I understand it, in their run, he hasn't been uniformly great. No, I don't think he's no. actually been up and down, yep. and they've more than survived it. They've gotten here. So, to the notion that well, he Kyrie's going to have to have a bounce back game because he's just been too good. He hasn't been consistently that good, to right. be honest with you. Right. So, I, I don't know. I'm sure they're going to start Jaden on him again. I would think so. As, as Johnny says, the uh, element of surprise is now gone on that. Yep. But that may not matter. Now they may create some actions. That you know cause switches again, and we've all heard how you know uh, switches can be the nightmare uh, given the two big men that the that the wolves use to try to make basically get Jaden off of him. But I do think that's been uh, that was a very clever, uh, effective move, and I'll be curious to see if it can be carried forward because there's there's no secret here. It's not just can our t- big two beat their big two. Um, it's I think more specifically it's. Well, if you can somehow limit one of their big two, then they're vulnerable, yeah. right? Because they've got some nice other pieces, but they're pretty vulnerable in that situation. They need both those guys to be very big. Maybe not through the whole game. That's the advantage of having both of them. One of them first half, one of them second half. And they do it that but way. they kind of need both uh, to be really good. And Luca, again, he missed a lot of shots as well. I mean, that's the question. Can you expect they were a combined 13 for 39? So unlikely that you're going to get you know that kind of shooting again but maybe one of them still does right. as long as you could try to limit one of them 
I think you're going to be in pretty good position. I would imagine their response, talking about Dallas, would be to try to get one of them going. Like, if they start out with Ant, I would imagine Luca starts going right at the basket or starts, you know, kind of doing the bully ball thing that he's done earlier That's in true. the series. Because that was my worry about Ant guarding him earlier in the series when he got switched on him a couple of times. Game one, I think, in particular, Luca just basically backed him down and posted him up. They didn't right. do a screen, they didn't wait for anything. Yeah. Luca just took him. Which so I'm I'm assuming they're going to try to get one of those guys established here pretty early. It might be Kyrie. You were right there. I mean, courtside from where I was sitting, kind of upper level, uh, l- upper part of the lower deck. The quickness of Kyrie in that game one was just incredible. incredible. And he got going, and that kept them in the game First for a while. Half, he had 24 points at the half. It was insane. And I would imagine they're going to try to do something to to free him up a little bit, or at true. least get him in the game earlier and not let Jaden take him out. I want to see some. I want to see some bodies flying around. I want to see. The, I, I want to see the Wolves up the ante on the physicality this last game. I want to see people. I want to see him get people going a little bit. Now again, there's a fine line. Yes, you can't get lost in that. And, and that's because not you got to have your your, your 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 players in the court. But I think some of the uh, the bumping that we saw to just make people uncomfortable. Uh, I, I I think it should absolutely be continued. And I and I do kind of like that. I, I'm I'm getting. That look sometimes from Rudy, like yeah, I kind of would, I kind of do want to knock a couple people around a little bit, or I'm not going to apologize if I do. Right. There doesn't seem to be a lot of love lost between Rudy and Luca in particular. Well, when you watch the highlight back of Luca hitting the three in game two, yeah. and Luca's comments directly to Rudy are, "Mother bleeper, you can't guard me, yeah. mother bleeper." I'd probably want to smack the guy yeah, too. I, you know me; I'm not much of a fighter. Well, and Luca, I'd probably want to. But smack again, him. that's how some of these guys pump themselves. They, they, I'm not that, blaming Luca, and, 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 yeah. and even Edwards has done variations of no that. Doubt. Maybe not quite as as frontal. Right. I want to see. To be honest, I still think Ant's too friendly with Kyrie. See, and even Luca. It seems like they're having these private, cool little conversations. Like right. they're, I you know, but that's I guess the generation. I I want. I don't want any quarter given. I want people who are cranky about, we're not in this to be sacrificed for you. Yeah. We're still in this to win this. I mean, Ant was like that with KD. That's true. And he also said, I just want to kill everything in front of me. He did say At the same time. Yeah. So as long as that instinct is still there, very, I, would, I would be comfortable. Very, very true, Davey. Uh, let me ch- double check. Uh, i got to find so- the screw for this microphone. I have oh, no idea where it went. Oh, it went some. We'll find it. Uh, for the game, the Mavericks shot 42%. Their three-point percentage was 35, which is not all that different from us from three. From three points, what were we? We were, uh, oh, actually, we were a little better than I thought, 45.8. How many did we make? We we were 11 for 24. So Cat made four of them. And, uh, yeah, on three-pointers, McDaniels made two. As you said, McDaniels played well. He's had a really good series. He has had a really good series. Towns made four, three in like three minutes. Conley made one out of four. Edwards was uh, two for five. And Nikhil had two, right? Two for five, which by his standards is I know. a breakthrough. Well, all of his threes are open. That's where that's what's frustrated me about about Nah in this series. Correct. And really going back to a little bit in the Denver series as well, is that every shot you get is going to be pretty wide open for an NBA shot given the attention that the other guys are drawing. Correct. And it's unfair. But yeah, but that's the way it is. It's, it's, you almost got to be three for five minimum. You know, Two for five, that's great. That's, for him, that's been a huge improvement. He hadn't been able to hit the first three games of the series. He had, I thought two, a couple of the misses were really good looks, and those are the ones that just have to fall. Uh, one more segment from the Target Center Cage location, and then we'll be followed up by uh, Holland with the homies. Um, as usual, Max and company. They're doing post game, I assume, today yes. as well. From that's here, why we put the sign out. That's the that's the beauty. Wolves of it. after dark, new version, the uh, the brand spanking new 2024 edition of Wolves after dark, a throwback to the old uh, Tucker Sinekin days from the Target Center, either Skyway or was it GameWorks? You said GameWorks, yeah. GameWorks, game, does GameWorks, GameWorks still GameWorks. exist? It does not. That's where the Timberwolves practice now. Those days basically. are all yeah. over. Back to wrap things up next year in the fan.
It's the Bumper to Bumper Show Wrap. Maybe some technical challenges here late from the uh, the cage. We talked at the start of the show about omens. Is this a bad omen? It's falling apart for the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight as they try to uh, win game five to extend this series and still keep history, the possibility of history, alive. I'm just ask it. Let's hope the Wolves finish better than we are. Yeah. This I, is like a game I one through. you, not me. Yeah, well, First of all, you lose the microphone. I made a mess of this. Bumped something else. And, and well, before you know it, we're lucky to even be on the air. I know. This is bad. This is actually. I feel rem- bad for Max because he might not be on the air. He'll figure it out. You think he'll figure it's, it out? He's Max. Yeah, that's This true. is reminiscent of the AM 1130 days. We brought the old sign out. Um, it's got AM 1130, and here so we are. So many nightmares. I know, and so here we are. technical nightmares. And Nick screwed then. this thing back in, but now this thing looks like it's off center. I'm trying to, you know, like this is too well, he's tight. He's doing the best he can. Oh, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. throw Nick under the bus. I'm just saying it's a team effort for the dysfunction. Thanks for finding the yeah. screw, though. Here's the key. This screw up here, you got to keep tightening it all the time. Yeah. The one that I lost was the middle one. And same as you, was lucky. I mean, I'm glad it didn't land on my foot. Right. Because those things are kind of heavy. Yes. All right. So final thoughts here for uh, tonight, game five. What do you, what do you want to see? I know what you want to see. You want to see a victory. Sure. But uh, more specifically, what do you want to see early from your favorite basketball team? A valuing of the ball. I want to see the same physicality defensively. Mm -hmm. I want to see. Do you want to see Luca on his ass? Is that what you're saying? I mean, that'd be Knocked nice. down a couple times. Yeah, that'd be fine. And then, and then my bad, foul. That's what, foul's on me. Yeah, that kind of thing. use your fouls. Yeah, use your fouls. Yeah, unless but, you're Carl. Yeah, you don't want yeah. Ant or Ant using too many of the fouls. I would just, globally, I would just like to see a cleaner performance than yeah. we have seen through four. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to take, I remember early in the Phoenix series, people close to the situation saying, if we stay out of our own way, we're going to be fine. And I felt like they beat the Mavericks the other night, and I also feet the, uh, felt they beat their own demons by the well, turnovers, feel- the missed free throws, the foul trouble, the whole bit. Are and we- Dallas has something to do with it. Are we overrating this issue given that in, in Game 4, Dallas had 13 turnovers? And I know it felt like the stats indicated every time we turned the ball over, they scored. They had 30 points off yeah. however many turnovers. So I don't know how that works, but they, you know, it wasn't like they only had four turnovers. They had 13. They did. Saying. It didn't feel like we made them cap. We capitalized no. as much as them. I didn't check the the number on the Wolves' points off turnovers, but that's the thing. Is like just play the cleanest game you've played of right. the series, right? Just don't make any stupid fouls. No dumb turnovers. Make it tough on Luca and Kyrie like he did in yeah. Game Three. And let's see if Carl can bounce back like he did. Let's let's see if that snapped him out of the malaise he was in for the first couple of games. I would also recommend what I would call responsible agitation because and responsible is the key word. You can't get too much into the histrionics. If there's some pushing and shoving and some physicality involved, it has to be responsible agitation kind of out of the Kessler deals. Like why, what I do, I right. say, you, you happen to be there and I knocked into you. Sorry about that. But enough to maybe annoy uh, Luca a little bit because I think Luca did get annoyed a little. Now Luca, we understand, is annoyed by everything. He's annoyed right and now. He's still very good, yeah. at what he does. But I do, I do want to see um, a lack of respect shown for their bodies every once in a while. The over under tonight on the refs you suck chant. Oh God, my nine year old's favorite. I'm sure he's on his way right now. I'm sure they're listening. They're getting ready for we, the game. We, it's a crew we like. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Mark, isn't it Davis? Is the main guy? Yes. Yeah, we like the crew. Yep. I, 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 although I think we're all falling into the trap too much of it's the only sport where we get obsessed with this stuff. And sometimes, Mike, the records also be dependent on who we played in a given game. Of course. Game. You know what I'm saying? Yes, As of course. To, well, it, if we, with this guy, we lose every time. We get this guy, we win. So what's the number? Wasn't Ed Malloy last game? Or was he? Wasn't he last game? Was Malloy part of we the Scott Malloy, Foster I crew? We won. Yeah, we won the game. We did. We did get a lot of fouls called on us. Uh, Some t- of them, we a lot of them. Cat, Cat earned, I think, every one of his fouls. I agree with you. Every one of them. I agree. Uh, the last one on Luca bothers you me. You got to call that one. They tried to get that out of the game. They yeah, have an instructional video showing yeah. Luca doing the same thing. Here's the fatal flaw. Cat didn't go straight up. Cat went back. He went into him. That's why I think it was still sure. But Luca had no intention of no. shooting the ball. Well, no, but okay. Well, we can argue about whether it should have been three or two. Luca, I'll give you that. Luca wanted to fire himself into Cat to draw the foul, and Cat took it, the 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 bait. Once Cat goes into him, which he did, he it wasn't like straight up, and then Luca launched at him. He first went into him. That's why they called it. 
That didn't get a reversed on the like, no, two-minute one, did it? No, it did not. Yeah. It did not. We and got another one that we liked that the, the, where we got screwed and the two-minute. Was that That was the, the, the Anthony Edwards foul where I'm still looking for the foul where they said he should have been fouled oh, on the floor. On the, yeah, yeah. And that was another one where play. he's just trying to draw the foul. Yeah, and yeah. I well, hate that's that. What, that's I know. what good players do. I know. I know, but I just I don't like it. It's not to you me like basketball. like when Ant does it. I, well, he never does. He never gets him well, called. He's not. <laughs> and he's not crafty okay, enough. Finchy. Yeah. I'm on well, Team Finchy. Crafty. I saw Finchy limping by us three hours ago. <laughs> I saw how hard it was for him. I'm, I'm, anything Finch says, I'm down with right. And Max is here, so I'm howling with the homies. Yeah, it's not. They, yeah, things, things have totally changed for me. It's like an infection. You, Objectivity's you gone. Yeah. I got my Garnett jersey. Yeah, we don't yeah. even know if KG's coming. He ain't coming. I know. We'd know by now. He's Probably coming for will. seven. And Tim Conley is too, apparently, well, to the we'll show. See. I still think it's a longer shot. That, uh, I think it's a better shot Garnett comes and Conley does into this booth. We'll find out. Beginning to thank Davey. Uh, is that the music I hear it faintly is. in the background? You do, yes. Thanks for helping. Thanks for listening. We're back at, at, uh, at headquarters, St. Louis Park, to review all of it beginning at the 3 o'clock right here on The Fan. Stay tuned. Howling with the Homies, live and local, coming up next. There's no way.